Did you catch the words of that song? You've made, uh, you've made a point to be here today, so we're glad for that, glad for each one that's here. Welcome to our, our service, uh, <clears throat> to our time of praise and worship. Uh, we're glad for that and glad for each one that's here. As far as off, uh, announcements go, there are some things in the bulletin that I want to draw your attention to. Uh, first of all, uh, today is, uh, the offering for today is for pastor support. So I know you've probably already put in or, or uh, uh, put it in the slots, but that, uh, that is, our offering today is for pastor support. So we'll remember that in, in our prayer here in a, in a minute as well. And then uh, underneath that, you're going to notice that there's a, there's an extra amount that's listed in the bulletin today for, for missions. That uh, $55.99, if you remember, we had the envelopes in the back for a while, and our goal was $5,000 and something. If we would have taken every envelope and everybody would have put the exact amount in, uh, we would have raised, I, I don't know, it was $5,000 something. Well, there were a lot of envelopes left over, but you can see that the amount was $55.99. So we surpassed the goal uh, without using all the envelopes. So good job on that. Thanks for, thanks for your attention to that and, and participating in, in that one. Any other announcements that anybody else needs to make? The, yeah, I have that wrote down. Yeah. So tonight we have uh, an all church care group. So everybody is invited. Uh, to bring finger foods, the drinks will be provided. We're going to be singing Christmas carols, uh, but when you get here, take your food over to the fellowship hall and then come back over to the sanctuary. So we're going to enjoy the Christmas carols here and then move back to the to the fellowship hall for for fellowship. So the singing will be will be in the sanctuary here. Anything else that needs to be announced? All right, if you would bow with me, let's, uh, let's just lift up the, the offering that we, that we took today. God, we just, uh, we come to you, and, and Lord, I just pray that uh, as we gather here together, Lord, that, that each one of us have made room in our heart, God, for what you have for us today, for what you want to teach us, for what you want us to, to take away from this place. God, and especially as we think of the offering that was lifted, and, and for uh, Kyle and Glory and Brad and Roxy as they... Um, continually serve our, our congregation and, and uh, look into your word to teach what, what you would have for us. God, we just thank you for their willingness to do that. I thank you for each one that, uh, that gave uh, a part of this love offering that we, that we lifted today. God, that it would just bless them, and Lord, that it would uh, most of all bring glory to your name. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> So we turned the calendar again. Uh, we set things up a little bit different this year to where uh, the, the praise and worship leaders have, uh, are here, are, are up the same week of the month. And I, and I didn't really think about it when I put myself at the start of, uh, at, on the first Sunday, but that means the calendar turns every time that I get up here. So if you get tired of me saying that, well, that's just because it happens every time I'm up here. But when you think about it, uh, it is, it's December already. And everybody you talk to, it seems like, man, it's December already. How is it December already? It's towards the, and we, we give out calendars at our office. And so we have these calendars and, and uh, the big ones that we take around to a lot of places, they have December on them. So it's, our, it's time for a new calendar because it's, it's got December and then the whole next year as well. So uh, as, we, as we think about that, and, and as I just thought about the timing and, and the time of year and just how fast a, a year goes. I, I got up from my desk this week and I was walking to the copier, which is in another little area uh, connecting two of, of our offices there upstairs. And so as I do that, we've got big windows and I, I happened to look out there. I was just glancing out the window and on the street below, which if you're not familiar where my office is, it's right, I look right out as you take the highway, the busiest highway through Seward, Highway 15, it's going right through Seward. A lot of traffic. I look out there, and there's a big, well, it's probably at least this big, a log. 
somebody had somebody had lost a piece of wood a tree limb and it was it was it was big around so it wasn't something that you really wanted to run over with your car and and i thought oh i i better go i'm the other thing you got to know about me is I don't wear shoes in the office. And so I thought, okay, I got to go put my shoes on so that I can go get this out. Because I just know that one of my clients is going to run over this log and then it's going to damage their car and they're going to call and they're going to have a claim. So I, okay, I'm going to put my shoes on and I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to move this log. Well, it wasn't just a couple of minutes. I couldn't help but sit there and watch this. So the first person that comes up to it is a, a contractor. Not from Seward County, so I, nobody that I'm calling out here. They pull up with this van, and they get right up to it. And pretty soon, they back up. And I thought, oh, good, they're going to they're gonna move it. Nope, they backed up so that they could drive around it. Now, I'm saying it probably took them longer to do that than if they just would have got out and moved along. Okay? There were two more contractors Okay, now I'm saying contractors because I think these guys are, they would be able to get out of their car and move, the, move this log. You know, that's, they're, they're workers, they're laborers. Okay, they didn't do it. Kept going around, kept going around. I see a, a gal that works in a bank and I saw her t actually turn and go the other way. And about that time, I see her run, this is about a, it's a, I, it's a process. I'm watching this for a little bit here now because it was intriguing. Uh, she comes, and she must have parked back here, and she comes kind of walking quickly down the, down the road in nice clothes. I mean, she works at a bank. Takes, and she can barely get it. She gets it and pulls it off to the sidewalk. She took the time to go around the block, park, walk up there, move the limb off the side of the road. One, now, eventually, I'm sure there would have been other people that did that too. But she took the time, one person that I watched do this. So I, I, didn't have to, I didn't have to go down there at that time. It sat there on the sidewalk for probably three or four days before finally I parked right there and then threw it in the back of my truck to haul it off. But it just, as I was thinking about our time of praise and worship and thinking about time, what do we, what do we make room for? That song that Brad had played here. What are we making room for? In Psalm 90, verses 10 and 12, it says, The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and, fly, and we fly away. So teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. In Ephesians 5, verses 15 and 16, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Now that opportunity to pick up a, a limb off the road is not saving someone's soul. But do I look for those opportunities? Do I pass by when I see somebody that needs help? Do I make the most of each 24 hours? There might be somebody who needs me. Am I paying attention or am I just driving around? There might be uh, chances to give love. There might also be chances to receive love. Each day will bring you closer to God or further away. Are we making the most of each 24 hours that we want to be closer to God? I happened to catch the, the tail end of a football game yesterday, and they were interviewing, I, I think it was the quarterback of this team, and he said, every day we strive to be 1% better. We just want to be 1% better. Every, did anybody else see that yesterday? Jeff, you heard that? 1% better. Every day I want to be 1% closer to God. I don't know what percent means, but anyway, I want to be closer to God. How about you? We want to be closer to God. We want to make more room for God in our lives each day. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
Don't just let each day happen to you. Pray for it, plan for it, and make it count. So today, I'm glad that you made it part of your plans to be here. I want everybody to rise, and, and you can uh, tell your neighbor that too. Tell them that you're glad that they're here, and then we'll sing some songs together. from the realms of glory.
worship Christ, the newborn King. Amen. The last song we're going to do is Joy to the World. Joy to the World.
morning. It's good to see you. It's good to see each person here. And I think we've officially hit the Christmas season. It looks nice here. Uh, it's been Christmas at our house for a couple weeks, and I like it. Christmas is one of my favorites. As we, as we come together, I just welcome you, and if there's visitors, I welcome you to come and to just worship with us. And as I um, have been thinking of this Sunday and this message, uh, my mind's gone a lot of places, and I've, I've thought a lot. Uh, the title of my message is Prepared for Any Moment. And so my question is, what do you prepare for? Pre -pre prepare for? Do you prepare for anything? Are there things that you get ready for that you're, you're preparing for? And of course the answer to that is that yes, everybody prepares. Um, I, I prepared notes for a message this morning. You all prepared to come and hopefully to, to hear God speaking through that message is my prayer for you. Um, maybe some of you laid clothes out last night, what you were going to wear today. You prepared for that. I know uh, when my wife has company, if she has company over to our house, if I walk by the counter, there's, probably, there's usually a, a, a piece of paper laying there. And it's got on it like meat and potatoes and noodles and vegetable and dessert and she prepares because you don't want to get ready to sit down and you're like, oh, I forgot all about the meat. Wouldn't that be terrible? So you want to be prepared. So we make lists. Um, I'm, I'm sure that, I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have made Christmas lists. You've asked those on your list, what do you want for Christmas? And you've prepared, and, and you've bought gifts, or you will buy gifts, or you'll wait till the last minute, and then you'll wonder why what you want isn't there. Well, I'm telling you now, prepare, and get it now, okay? We anticipate things. Um, this week, I, I actually booked tickets for our flight to pastor's conference in February. That seems like a long ways away, doesn't it? But it'll be here before you know it. And you've got to prepare for those things. So this morning, the title of the message is Prepare for Any Moment. And as I thought of this message, and I, as I prayed that God would just give me a message that is it's, it's kind of a Christmas message. It's kind of where we start with it. But it's more than that, and I, I hope you get that, and I hope you understand my, my heart today, and I hope you understand where I am. Yeah. This morning I want to look at people that were prepared. I look at what they were prepared for. I want to look at one that was called to prepare, and what that person was called to prepare. And then I want to look at you and me. I want to look especially at me. And ask myself, am I ready to prepare at any moment? Because at any moment, we could be called upon. God could kick us into action. God could put an opportunity in front of us. And every moment, we need to be prepared for that. Whether it's moving a limb on, on a busy highway, whether it's uh, paying for someone's meal or coffee in the vehicle behind you, or whether it's praying with someone as they ask God into their life to change their heart. See, God uses those little moments and he wants us to be faithful in all those moments to prepare us for where he wants to use us. And so this morning, for a text, I'm going to go to Luke 1. And we're going to read verses 5 to 25. And as we read through this, this will be a very familiar passage to you. But there's just a couple things I want to I want to pull out of this as we think of prepared for any moment. Starting at verse five, in the te in the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the laws, com the Lord's commands and degrees blamelessly. 
but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty, he was serving as priest before God. He was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and to burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came and all the assembled worshipers were praying outside, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to you to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until, until the day this happens, because you do not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in, in seclusion. The Lord has done this to me, she said. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. An account that we're familiar with. An account that is normal, it's common that we read this before we get into the full messages of the Christmas season, right? Because you see things had to be prepared. Things had to be set up. Things had to be in order, right? So it was no different then than what it is now. There was preparation that had to have happened then. But as I started through these verses and I looked at these verses, I looked at Elizabeth and I looked at Zechariah. And I, as I read those first three verses, those first three verses are packed. But what I see they're packed with is I see a Zechariah and I see an Elizabeth and I see that they were prepared. And you might say they were prepared. What were they prepared for? Well, let's just look at this. They were two ordinary people. Well, kind of. Kind of they were ordinary. They had a special purpose. God called them for a special reason. Just like he calls, and I could name every one of you sitting here. He's called every one of us for a special purpose. But these people realized it. You see, Zechariah, he was a priest. He was set apart to do God's work. And Elizabeth, well, he, she was his wife. But she was also, a, she came from, well, it says the descendants of Aaron, from a family of priests. So we would call them maybe, they were preacher's kids, I don't know. Preacher's kids from preachers of preachers of preachers, I don't know. If when, when I go to, to a pastor's conference in February, well, there's several people that I can think of right now that, well, their dad preached, and their grandpa preached, and their uncles preach, and their brother preaches, and that's just a family of, they're a family of preachers. And that's kind of what I see here as I look at Zechariah and, and Elizabeth. They were from the family of priests. But more important of who they were, where they fell in their family, is what it says in verse 6. As it gives us a description of who they were in the eyes of God. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God. You can be who you are, and that's good. But more importantly, you need to be who God has called you to be. And I see Zachariah and Elizabeth well, I don't even have to wonder. Both of them were righteous. They didn't have to try to impress others. Their focus was on following God and what his will was for their life. And he goes on in verse 6, they were also described as observing all the Lord's commands and degrees blamelessly. 
come what may, whatever happened, they knew who they were and they knew who they were following. And they followed him blamelessly. They followed him, come what may. Come what may. And, and you might say, well, well, what an easy life. I mean, dad and grandpa and great-grandpa and ancestors and brothers, where they were all priests and they got it all together. and it, They're happy. And, and there's no concerns in life, right? Well, keep reading. Verse 7. It might not hit you like it hit them. Or it might hit some people really hard. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. You see, that's a big deal. And that was a big deal back during this time. And that's a big deal today. Being a parent is, well, it's one of the greatest gifts ever. God entrusting a child to you. God entrusting a son or a daughter to you to raise, to bring up for his glory. And back in these days, even more than what it is today, it, that was looked down on. If you were not able to have children, if you were, were a, a woman that was barren, it was looked at that there was, it was, it was maybe a shame almost to the couple, or that there was maybe some type of, of sin or or problem in their lives. But then I go back to both of them were righteous in the sight of God. But they were childless. And as I see their righteousness in the sight of God, I see their desire to follow after Him. I see what I see in many of, in all of the lives I interact with in my life. There's hurt. And there's disappointment and there's pain. But this morning I'm here to tell you God is bigger. And God is greater. And God knows. And God hears. And God, God knew the pain that Zachariah and Elizabeth was going through as, as they were childless. And as they go on with their, in their life, and, and we know that they were, verse 7 says they were both very old. And I don't know how old very old is. I don't know if it's 95. I don't know. But they were both very old, and so they were past the time where you thought that they would be a young couple having children. I mean, if, if, if I got the news this week that James and Becky were expecting a little one, wow. Yeah, you'd be shocked too, wouldn't you? Yeah. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking, okay? But even in their hurt, they were prepared to follow after God. As we come to verses 8 and 9, and we've already been told that Zechariah is older, and now I want to switch from who they were to, to Zechariah's position of where he was. You see, he was, he was a priest, and as I did studies, being chosen to be a priest in the temple was a high honor. This is an honor that you didn't take lightly. And my note said it's estimated that there were around 18,000 priests in Israel at this time. And so it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to burn incense to the Lord. This is the closest that a priest would be able to get to the Holy of Holies unless he was the high priest. And once you had the opportunity to do this duty, your name was not included in the selection process again. You did it, and you were done. So it was a once-in-a-lifetime event. And many priests would go through their life and not be selected. So as I looked at Zechariah, I wondered what he wondered. I'm born into this priesthood family. God's called me here, and I may never serve. I may never get the opportunity. And on top of all that, we have prayed and we prayed and we prayed, and we may never have a child. And well, James, it looks impossible at this point, doesn't it? Yeah. But they continued to be devoted to God. You see, he was prepared to serve, but you also needed to be chosen to go into the temple to serve. God had a call on their lives. They continued to be faithful to him, even through trials and even through heartaches. 
But they were ready at a moment's notice to be used how God wanted to use them at a moment. You see, they didn't just prepare a day or two before the call came into Zechariah. This was a lifetime of preparation. A lifetime of being prepared of whenever and wherever. And as I thought about that, I thought about each one of us here today. On December 3rd, 2023, and I hope you're not just yesterday starting to prepare for where God wants to lead you. It starts at an early age when you follow after Christ, being willing to go. And it might mean that you don't, you are fulfilling his plan, but as Zachariah and Zacharias' example, it was, it was later in life. As I thought about this, I, I just thought about willing. Be willing to wait. Be prepared to wait, but be willing to move at a moment's notice. Be prepared to move in a moment, in an instant. As we come to verse 10, the time for burning incense came, and all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Zechariah enters into the temple, and as he starts to burn the incense, and I don't know the, I don't know all everything that went with it. But he's in there, as, as he's in there. I don't know what his thoughts were that as he went into the temple. I don't know if he was just amazed that he was actually chosen. This was actually his, God had, God had chosen him to go in. The lot had, been, had fallen on him. And he was going to be able to serve in this way. And maybe him and Elizabeth talked about it before he went in. I don't know. Of the great honor of being chosen to go in. And to burn incense in the temple. But as he went in there, and as he was prepared to go in there, was he prepared? Well, he was prepared to go in, but I can guarantee you he was not prepared for what happened next. And as he was in there, it said an angel came. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and gave him the news that they're going to be parents. Now, no doubt there's a look of fear. And it says there, he, he was gripped with fear. And then the angel told him not to be afraid. I mean, he's in there doing this job that he had waited years and years and years to do. And then he gets the news that he's going to be a father that they had waited years and years and years to hear. As he served God in the temple as a priest... As he was burning incense and worshipers were worshiping outside the temple, Zechariah receives the news that he was not prepared for, but also the news that him and Elizabeth had prepared for their entire lives. You see, at a moment's notice, their lives changed. And they were prepared for that change. And as the angel came, up, came on and, and, and he gave them the news, as we... We come to these verses in verses 14 to 17, and this is where we usually focus on John the Baptist. Now, there's seven things in these verses, in these uh, four verses, that the angel specifically said what was going to happen, or what was going to be required, or what was going to be expected. The details. He will be a joy and a delight to you. Many will rejoice because of his birth. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go on before the Lord to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient of the wisdom to the righteous. And finally, he will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You see, he hadn't even been conceived yet. And the angel of the Lord gave Zechariah specific details and instructions of what this child of theirs, this son of theirs, John the Baptist, was going to be. God had a plan. And God knew that he had prepared Zechariah and Elizabeth for this. They had faithfully followed after God. They were now ready for this special opportunity to be part of someone's life, their son's life. That would help to change the world. And as I look back over these verses and what he was and what this was and all the information that was bombarding him, you see, this was number one, it was the news of a pregnancy. Number two, this was also the gender reveal party. You will have a son. Number three, this was also the naming of the child. You're going to have a son and you're going to name him John. 
Number four, it gives you details on how to raise a child, what he should do and what he should not do. Number five, it gives you what the career of the child's going to be. He's going to go before the Lord and he's going to turn the... And number six, it showed the results of. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What else is there to do? Parents, if we had all those information just like that, we'd have no worries, right? Well, maybe. But the angel came packed with information, packed with details on who this child was going to be and how prepared they were to welcome him in. And as we read through the rest of this, there's going to be many questions. And there was many questions. Well, how? And I don't know if, if I, I don't know, I don't know if Zachariah was, I don't know what they did, how they burned incense, but maybe he went back to burning, and he's like, what? A child? I, I, I don't understand, Angel, if you know how old Elizabeth is. You see, this wasn't normal. But it was normal that he questioned, kind of. And the angel, we, we see that. We see his disbelief. Even in his disbelief, it was a sign from God. And as he came out of the temple, he stayed in there longer, obviously. You don't want to leave the presence of an angel. And he lingered there longer. And even his disbelief was a sign that this really was from God. See, this morning it's important to be prepared. And God is waiting for just the right moment. Just the right time to show you and to show me his plan and his purpose. Now he wants us to be faithful today. He wants us to be faithful every day in everything we do. But God wants us to be prepared for the big. As I thought on this account, I asked myself, well, what, what can I take from this? How can I apply this in 2023? And I feel that God gave me this visual, and I, I want you to bear with me, and I hope you get the visual that I got. And I, I remember I was, it was last Sunday morning, and I was, I was sitting down there in my bench, and Kyle was preaching, and yes, I was listening to what he was saying, but it's just like God gave me this visual. And I, I thought this over, because it seemed kind of silly, or kind of like it won't make sense. And it was a couple days, it may be, I mean, it was Wednesday before I finally said, Roxy, I just need to ask you a question. I just need to bounce something off of you. <laughs> I don't know what her response was for sure, except she just kind of looked at me. And she said, are you nervous? And I said, yeah, I'm nervous. And she goes, I am too. <laughs> she wasn't prepared. But I want to share with you this morning what my visual is. And I hope you get my visual for being prepared. You see... Am I prepared? Are you prepared? And what are we prepared for? What are things we prepare for? We talked about that. But this morning, Carter and Egan, I want you to come up and do the job you have to do. I gave several people some jobs to do this morning, and I just want to talk through them as, as they perform their duties. See, God wants us to start with a foundation. God wants us to start with something to build on. Both of these boys, Carter and Egan, have both made a decision to make God their foundation, to build on them. And as they, as they came to this decision, it took preparing it took preparing by their parents. It took preparing by their grandparents. It took preparing by their Sunday school teachers, by their Bible school teachers. It took preparing by their church family. You see, we all have a part in the preparation that happened for this foundation of this table and this chairs to be set up. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. You see, it has to start there. You and I have to be prepared to look to the one that is the foundation and to bring others to that foundation. It starts with the foundation. Has my foundation been prepared? And as my foundation has been prepared, Julianne, you can come up. 
As my foundation has been prepared, I think of a tablecloth. And as we continue on, now we could sit down and we could eat there, but, well, not really. But as, as Julianne puts that tablecloth on the table, I would fast forward through Christmas to 33 years later when Jesus was walking this earth. God sent his son to this earth to walk. He came to the cross. He was nailed to the cross and his blood was shed as a covering for me, just like this, this tablecloth is covering this table. And Julianne has accepted that, that covering on her life to come to Christ and let him cover her sins. Him cover the foundation of what Chad and Amber and, and what others have spoken to her life. To cover that foundation. You see, John the Baptist was called to prepare the way for the one that was coming after him. The one that would be the only way that you and I could have eternal life. And as Julianne moves on and she accepts this this covering over her life of the blood of Christ over the foundation that's been laid. I thought of Acts 12, 4, verse 12. Salvation can be found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Am I prepared to share the best news ever? That the free gift of the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, what it cost him on his life, on the cross, what it cost him for his blood to cover, to cover me and my sins so I can be holy before him. And I look at this table and I look at the foundation that's been built and I look at the tablecloth that's there, it's covering my foundation, his, his sins, and I think it's not enough and, and there needs to be more. And we have more and Brandon and Kyan, if you would come up and, and do what you've been responsible to do. You see, as I look at that table, it's empty. If you go home or you have guests over, your table isn't empty. You see, your table has to have, has to have plates on it. It has to have napkins. It has to have glassware. It's got to have silverware. It's got to have all the necessary things. And as I look at the foundation of, of Jesus Christ and what we can build on, and I look at the, the tablecloth of, of his blood that covers my sins, and I look at the necessity, the necessary things of what they're putting on that table. What I don't see is a plate. What I see is his love and his mercy. I don't see silverware. I see, I see his protection. And I see his love. I don't see glassware, but I, I see the, the faith to go through the hard times, the struggles of this life. And I need that. I need that on my foundation that's covered by his blood. I need the table set. Yeah, I will mess up. Yes, I will fail him. But no, he will never let me walk alone. He says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3. Jesus says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. See, I have to have the correct utensils and the correct tableware to eat a meal. I also have got to rely on the grace and the mercy and the love and the forgiveness and the protection of Jesus Christ as I prepare to walk with him every day. As if you were invited to our house and you would come in and you would see this, you would say, well, that's enough. And it might be enough, but Madison, why don't you come up? And it might be enough, but there's times in our life when we walk through our life. And this could be enough, but I don't want it to be enough. Because you see, I want God to bless me. And I want to experience the blessings of God in my life. And I'm, I'm not even going to name blessings today. Because each one of you know what a blessing is in your life. Whether it's a child or a grandchild. Whether it's protection for something awful that had happened or or you just seen God's faithfulness or just that you woke up this morning and that headache was gone that's such a blessing you see that's what I'm seeing is as Madison is putting these decorations on the table 
His mercy and his grace and his love and his forgiveness, they're enough. The foundation that he gives us, it's enough. The, the price that he paid, it, the sin that covered it, that's enough. But I want to experience those blessings that he gives me. You see, God prepares us to see his goodness in ways that we sit back and we just say, aw. Or we just say, thank you, Jesus. We don't need those decorations on the table. But it sure makes it look prettier, doesn't it? I don't have to have those blessings in my life, but it sure does give you what you need to go on, doesn't it? And that's what God gives us. He prepares for us. Philippians 4, 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ. And as I read that glorious riches, I thought of his many extravagant blessings that I don't deserve. Yeah, I don't deserve his mercy and love. But I don't deserve the blessings that he gives me of whatever blessing is in your life. That's the decorations on the table. He's prepared that for us. And as I look at that table, I see one more thing that has to happen. And Roxy, you can come up. The foundation's been laid. My sins have been covered. The place settings of mercy and grace and forgiveness and trust and protection have been granted. The blessings that he gives us that he sprinkles along the way. But I have one response left. I need to shine my light for his glory. Am I prepared to shine my light to others that need to see his glory? You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gets light to everyone that's in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We're called to be lights. We're called to be his light. I don't know what this, if this is what your table will look like today. I don't know if when Christmas comes around, it'll... But I want you to think about that when you prepare your table for the people that are coming over. Maybe you're preparing your table for one other person. Maybe you're preparing your table for 25 to 30 other people. Maybe you're preparing to sit at the table by yourself. But you're not sitting there alone because Jesus Christ is there with you. And what he's given you is amazing. The table's prepared. The guests are waiting to arrive. See, Zachariah and Elizabeth, they were prepared. They were waiting to serve. They were waiting for a child that seemed like an impossible request. John the Baptist was prepared. He had been given his life instructions to introduce Jesus Christ into a world that he needed to prepare people for, for him to see. This morning the question to me is, am I prepared to go wherever God wants me to go? Am I prepared to serve whoever he wants me to serve? God's given you a plan and he's given me a plan. He's laid the foundation. I need to build on that foundation. He's shed his blood on the cross. He's given me his mercy and grace. He's blessed me with many blessings. He's called me to be his light. And how do I know that? Well, I know that. I know that because his word says that. But you are a chosen people. And it's like the angel standing before me. Not only did the angel go to Zechariah and tell him about his son John, this is Jesus telling us. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a people belonging to God that we may declare his praises to him, the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. I'm going to have the worship team come up. They're going to lead us in a closing song. Right now, God is right now preparing people to be willing to prepare people to be prepared to sit with him at his table in glory. This morning, as we're prepared people 
preparing people for the preparation of the, the banquet that we're going to see in heaven. May this be an example that we are prepared for any moment that he wants to use us or any moment that he wants to call us home. And when we're prepared, we have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to go. And that responsibility is to tell others. So stand with me as we sing, go tell it on the mountain. And let's get ready and let's plan and let's prepare to tell others about the table that we've been invited to and who's sitting there with us.